a monk, at the door. One summer morning, the doorbell woke me. When I opened the door, there was a man in a Tibetan robe, wearing Buddy Holly frames. He was a chaplain from the Minneapolis police. He read from a piece of paper in his hand. He told me that my daughter had been found dead in her room. Then I had to tell my wife, Rachel, a man downstairs says Danielle has died. This really happened. It was August 18th, 2009. Within moments of hearing my daughter was dead, God died too. I had put all my trust in his faithfulness. I knew we were on a journey, a journey I couldn't understand, but I trusted in God to see us through. I prayed every day for protection for Danielle from the dangers that surrounded her life. And so, God began to shrink, to collapse to a dot. I could see him disappearing into air. I could hear his tiny voice calling out, goodbye. The day of the funeral, a beautiful hawk perched on our backyard lines. A dozen people looked up as it surveyed us, shrugged, and flew away over the garage. Sometimes, in the fall, down by the river bluffs, I see eagles and herons and ducks. Always a curious sensation that they are not just birds, they are messengers somehow. Here I am, they are saying. I am here. I am everywhere. Winter was hard. Rachel went away. Friends stopped calling. They were sick of my stories. I sat and watched the satellite, and I drank. Sometimes I was so angry I would argue all day with the people who no longer called. Behind their backs I told them the truth to their faces. Spring came. The trees leafed out and blossomed. One day I heard a tapping in the dining room. A robin had returned and flown in the back door and now was leaping over and over again into the same sealed window. The bird was frantic, afraid, and exhausted. I fetched a plastic Walmart bag from the pantry and slipped it over the frightened bird. As gently as I could, I placed the bag on an open planter in the backyard. The bird sat paralyzed, unblinking, one wing cocked awry. I left the bag and bird alone, and when I returned minutes later, the bag was empty. The bird was gone. And for the first time, I found myself wondering about something. If God was truly gone, if nothing mattered, 
and the universe wasn't just a snide joke on the conscious. Then why was that man on the porch, with the stubbly scalp and stubbly chin, and the stammering affect? Why was he wearing saffron?